Wow, what the heck just happened to Zebra Technologies, one of yesterday's best performers? For those of you who don't remember, Zebra is the maker of specialty printers, including thermal label and receipt printers, as well as associated software supplies and radio frequency identification solutions that acquired from Motorola's enterprise business last April. The transformational deal made Zebra a leader in mobile computing, barcode and mobile printing, data capture, the whole RFID business, not to mention location and man motion management solutions and cloud-based device management, which we're really going to talk about. Now, we last spoke to Zebra CEO roughly five weeks ago. The time I told you the synergies from this Motorola Enterprise deal would be tremendous. Fast forward to yesterday morning, and Zebra reported a spectacular quarter, setting its stock soaring 14% higher in a single session. The company delivered a monster 27 cent earnings beat off a dollar 12 basis with higher than expected revenues that more than tripled year over year. And that's largely thanks to the Motorola deal, but the Zebra business is wow, it's on fire. Let's check in with Anders Gustafsson. He's the CEO of Zebra Technologies. Hear more about the quarter and where his company's headed. Mr. Gustafsson, welcome back to May of Money. Thank you. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. When I saw the numbers initially, I said, wow, the Motorola business is on fire. Well, it's clearly strong, but you're, uh, I guess you're. Zebra business, the basic, the really business. accelerated. Yeah, you had a very, very strong uh, core business or the pre-transaction business. It was up 19% uh, in constant currency. So I uh, was very pleased with that. Now, uh, one of the things that I feel like that I, I, when I, I, the first time you were on, talked a lot about the hardware. I think this enterprise asset intelligence interpretation of Internet of all things is what's going to drive your company for the next few years. Could you tell people how you're not just the sensor company, but you're now reading and being able to think for the yeah. companies? Yeah, we, so what we think, how we, we see basically three big themes uh, coming together to creating the foundation for enterprise asset intelligence. It's Internet of Things, which provides lots Internet of data things, right. about what's going on in the physical world. You have cloud computing, which really provides computing capacity or power to do uh, anal an analytics, provide real-time uh, analysis and, and action-oriented activities that can be delivered over mobility solutions to the right people at the right time with the right location. All right, so let's talk about a typical retailer. Yeah. How do they, they bring in Zebra. Zebra, in the old days, maybe they'll say, oh, I see that the cookies are out of stock. Yeah. Now they're doing, oh, really, kind of, I felt it was kind of like almost artificial intelligence. Yeah, so we can do a lot of more different things for the retailers today. We, you know, one thing would be uh, we can do, you know, say, we use passive RFID technology to passive RFID, passive RFID technology okay. to have uh, in-store inventory visibility improvements. So uh, historically, retailers would have gone out and done uh, a physical count of a, a good, right. and usually they get about 65% inventory accuracy. If you put passive RFID on top of that and have a fixed reader, you can get up to 98, 99% accuracy. So what would accuracy. they do differently? They put something at the end of the aisle. What would they, they do? Put some Something in, in the in the good, a little small little tag uh, on your on the barcode or on the label. But how will they change their uh, way that they demonstrate the way that they display goods? They won't have to change anything from that perspective. It's invisible to to the retail, to the shopper. But, but at the same time, they might change their strategy if they see something selling really well. From oh, absolutely! It, it's you know it increases the service level to the retailer to the to the customer because now the customer is more likely to find what they need because the, you know the retailer can is better able to. Right reorder what's out of stock versus reordering anything that's in on the shelf. Okay, so what have you discovered of the new part that you bought from Motorola that is working really well with old Zebra? I think that you know the whole story around better together is, is coming together very nicely for us. You know we worked side by side uh, for the same accounts for for 20 years. Really? Yeah. Okay. So we we have kind of offered two That's halves. That's why the of synergies have been so yeah, good. Absolutely. So we offered two halves of a complete solution. We now see lots of lots of uh, customers where, which come back and you know we may have had a strong position with part half of the company say, but not the other half. And now they really look at us as as much more of a strategic partner than than what they would otherwise have done. Now you did pay a lot. You, you borrowed a lot of money. I see you're paying down. Debt. Are you happy with that schedule of, of debt yeah, pay? I think we're slightly ahead of, of where mm -hmm. we expected, so we've paid down about $80 million so far. And, and you, you had one of the few companies I saw that had really good orders in China. Yes, we had good. China was very good. We have, you know, from, particularly from the enterprise side, we were up, uh, uh, I think, about 30% of year over year in China. And the, despite the currency, I mean, it would have been, your numbers would have been really extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. If you thought that the dollar has peaked like we do against yeah. a basket of currencies, how much could you swing just on that? If the dollar strengthens? If, no, if the dollar if, is done, let's say the dollar is really done. Yeah. And it's going yeah. to go down versus okay. all oh, the currencies. Going down. Yeah. How much, because yeah. you, you're not just a European, you're, you're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it could be a major swing for Zebra. Absolutely, because today we, we see, you know, the, the euro depreciation has created difficulty in that, uh, you know, 
we sell in euros. Right. The euro is down 25 percent. There's basically you know, a price cut of 25 percent. We increased pricing in Europe uh, in April. So we had to raise prices. Oh, you did yeah. in order to be able to make up for the. So we had to make up for some of the, some of the shortfalls. Did it other stick? Way. Have the pricing we, stick? We believe it's sticking pretty well. Not probably not 100 percent, but a, a good part of it is sticking. Wow. OK, because I, I saw that it was a 300 basis point headwind. Yeah. currency, yeah. which is really kind of monumental that you're yeah. still able to do that. I think that's what people were shocked that you yeah. could do the number given yeah. that. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting was that you talk about retailers now appreciate the additional value of enhancing the shopping experience. To me, that seemed like the kind of customer relations management that we're used to from an outfit like a Salesforce. Do they work in conjunction? Do your customers work in conjunction with a customer relations management, or are you the customer relations management? No, we tend to provide the tools for the customer right, relations management. Right, that's what I thought. Yeah. So what, yeah. well, work in conjunction with someone else once yeah. they have that? Yeah, so we, we can do things like we can provide, a, 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 say, a retailer or somebody else you know, much more information about how a consumer moves around a store so they can you know, use that information to understand you know, if they're dwelling over in front of the coffee, they can you know, provide a, you know, a coupon to that's them. Because that. that's what I wanted yeah. to ask you. I yeah. felt that a coupon in a kiosk, yeah. if I'm on the go and I can get very, very quickly, without having to clip a coupon, yeah. see that I can get a bargain, yeah. but you would alert my cell phone? Uh, we, we can. You do it through your cell phone. Yeah, absolutely. That will be the most normal way. So, you, you know, the cell phone will be the, the, your, your guide, your you know, information. But we could actually also do, you know, show it on a, a shelf edge display type uh, a light vi visual, some, some way to communicate you there. See, because I know yeah. that we were talking about technology and Whole Foods. This is the yeah. key to millennials. Yeah. Yeah. Millennials are bigger savers than we think. Yeah. They, know, they love <laughs> deals. Yeah. Well, your company's really at the yeah. cutting edge. It's terrific. That, that's Anders Gustafsson. He's the CEO of Zebra Technologies. Guys, this company is on fire. And if the dollar really has peaked, the number's going to be amazing. Mad Money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.